Hey everyone, good afternoon uh, once again to my another video. Today we will be configuring checks and a part of that would be to actually configure checks and then print those checks as a payment and I will show you how the checks look like. Uh, there are standard configured checks already in the Business Central so it's, we don't normally have to do too much. Uh, in terms of configuration but you should know how to select a specific check and if those layout don't match up to what your client wants then it comes down to a developer so you would have to either get a developer or become a developer and it, it is a hefty work it's uh, almost a week's work to actually come to a point where you can uh, use the layout that is given to you by the bank or your client and you program it to make an extension to Business Central and use that extension as a check layout to generate proper checks that are acceptable so before I actually get into configuration there are a few things I want to show you uh, for instance if you were to go into selection layout and report selection layout this actually has the RDLC and Word file. So some of them are built in, uh, others you can modify to some extent. And uh, in my case, you can actually use the Word document, but I like the RDLC file because it provides more flexibility. So I had uh, previously used the RDLC file uh, to actually modify the check to some extent. And then I had to get a developer in to help me develop a check that was given to me by my client. So both uh, versions of the work was uh, required on my end and I got some exposure to that. So you also will get some exposure as you proceed with my videos. So in this you could see uh, there are different kind of built-in RDLC files. And let me search the ones that we're looking for. So these are the four check layouts that are built in in Business Central. And for you to actually figure out what they actually look like, you download them and then open up uh, a Visual Studio Report Wizard. It's an SQL Microsoft Wizard that actually allows you to open the RDLC files and you can modify them. Uh, just a caution that if you modify one, uh, only a little bit of it, it's, it's acceptable. But if you start playing around with it too much, then it messes up the check significantly. So always make sure that you all have an original copy prior to you uh, uploading it back here once you make the modification. Otherwise, uh, if you have different companies in your environment, it will transfer that RDLC file to other companies and you will not be able to actually generate or find the original one that uh, initially was built in. So. Uh, as you can see, uh, there's this check layout is a stub stub check, meaning that there's going to be two stub replicate of each other, and then at the very bottom there's going to be a check printed. Similarly, stub check stub, very self-explanatory, and then the last one is a check stub stub. So there's going to be a check at the very top, and then two stubs at the bottom. There, yeah, similar replicate of each other. Uh, the one that is a uh, uh, 1401 check. Uh, this one is basically a stub and a check so which is the most frequently used at least in Canada so that's why this is a default one and but if you ever want to change it uh, or your uh, client wants to change it to a different one then I can show you actually how to select but for now uh, you basically simply uh, choose this one or one of the other ones and we can begin configuration uh, that being said I will show you how you can change your check so if you do report selection bank account this is the default check uh, check that is already in the system so a user when they print a check for a payment they will not get to choose what kind of a check uh, they can print out so for you to change your default one you would have to go to report selection bank account and change the report ID to something different and then it will pop up here and then that would be your default one. So that is something very useful to know obviously. And when you build an extension then you will assign a separate report ID and then uh, you use that as a default. 
so uh, when we go into configuration it's not very uh, not much uh, to do uh, to be honest unlike the EFT that we had uh, done a while back uh, so if you just go into vendors and when it opens up you simply go down and under payments uh, as I have already configured you just have to put the check date format and just make sure the payment method code is checked so these are the only two things that you actually need to do uh, before you make a payment to a vendor so you have to make sure that which vendor requires a check payment and which one requires an EFT payment so it can mix and match together so you need to identify that in the system under the vendor card and that should be given to you by your client so when those two things are done you simply go to payment journal here and you need to select your batch name as check so we talked about batch uh, well uh, templates the journal templates and batches and journal lines so batch name has to be check make sure of that and simply you just make a transaction like this so I'm gonna select this guy I'm gonna select income partner apparently so we have a vendor called income partner and as you can see default by default is can EFT so it's Canada EFT let's change that to check because we're going to generate a check so it's going to be check payment I am going to do 102 cents I guess and balancing account type is the bank this is the bank account uh, at the moment I did not generate any invoice so we're just making a payment directly and you have to select check so at this point these are just the dimensions on the side which uh, you don't need to worry about we'll discuss dimensions at some point in my other videos and you simply go on check we're gonna print check here so this bank account is applicable to the one that's an offset account the last check number was 13 uh, you can do a test print you can do reprint checks a precaution here that if you turn this off as it is right now then you will not be able to print a check again so for you to print a check again you would have to tell your client to be aware of um, actually not being able to print is what I meant uh, because uh, once you print then you would have to void the check and then reprint it again so it just upsets the whole GL entries so make sure that if you need to reprint check then you tell your client that uh, do a, uh, select this boolean as a true or I guess in this case it should be true that you are allowed to reprint checks but in my case I'll just leave it as is and uh, you don't need to worry, worry too much about anything else and let's see if it gets printed so you want to print a check and there you go so you have a layout of a printed check which is configured already in the business central so you see the check number is 14 so the last one was 13 the total amount is hundred dollars and two cents no discount given and uh, this is the company information right here this is uh, the amount in words this is the partner information I guess and the vendor information in this case their address uh, anything associated with it the date and the amount right here so this basically sums up the check for us and uh, I'm, uh, I hope that uh, you enjoyed this video and you keep enjoying this video uh, as we proceed towards uh, completing our environment.